While the quest for immortality is ancient and diverse, in the context of original Taoism, it is quite specific. Immortality is usually simply defined as eternal life, being exempt from death, and unending existence. While Genghis Khan probably to some extent wanted to extend the life of his flesh body, the occult nature of esoteric internal alchemy does not revolve around anti-aging or cheating death, but rather on fortifying other aspects of a person's beingness not acknowledged in modern Western science. To put it in the simplest terms, the ancient Eastern and Eurasian philosophies are concerned with the development and survival of the soul, the consciousness, and nourishing the spiritual or light body that allegedly survives the death of the physical body. This is a big subject and there's been much written on it and even more that is only transmitted orally through initiation into mystery schools, but can still be detected in many of the traditions of ancient cultures, such as tantric yoga, which is very different from the type that just involves stretching and holding postures, gigong, which involves the circulation of qi or qi throughout the body, but only works once one has learned how to harness and transmute the qi in the first place. Otherwise, it's nothing more than dancing in slow motion. Meditation, which again, in its esoteric form, is very different from the type most commonly taught today, which is more like just taking a nap. True meditation is not relaxing at all, and is a far cry from just sitting there still with one's eyes closed as what is happening internally on a subtle energetic level is anything but stillness. There are aspects of nutrition and herbology which I won't get into as this knowledge can be abused, but it's no secret that many monks consume certain items with psychoactive properties which, when consumed, some claim can aid in the internal alchemical process. There are many accounts of monks, shamans, and even the Dalai Lama, whose urine and sacred excrement is regarded as having medicinal properties and having special healing or spiritual powers that induce an altered state of consciousness, likely a byproduct of what has been consumed and digested into the blood earlier. That said, the true heart of sacred internal alchemy, the guarded secret techniques as practiced by pharaohs, emperors, alchemists, philosophers, and monks has to do with the uniting of the male and female principles in a certain controlled way, which takes discipline and practice, and from this union creating a third force. This is the true hidden meaning behind all symbolism, which involves two polarities, male and female, coming together to create a third which is usually depicted as an exalted child. I cannot stress this enough, that this is symbolic and has nothing to do with procreation. The child that is being created is not physical and is just a symbolic representation of what is happening on a more subtle, energetic level. This spiritual force that is created happens on the inside of both a man or a woman and is what Taoists call building the immortal body, and in the West might be called a soul, spirit, or being reborn with a light body, similar to the rainbow body in Tibetan Buddhism. To help illustrate this concept, here's a brief excerpt from Taoist master Montauk Chia. So let's have a listen. So when you do, do that way and you started to really mixing this two energy into one right. and it started to form to another body uh -huh. and we call you inject a seed of the soul or the spirit into the into the, um, the immortal energy the, 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 the jing energy it give life to the another body that means we grow the soul and the spirit can you feel this happening inside you yes what do you feel mm. uh you when you turn in your mind in you feel another life within life you feel a light life growing inside. Uh, you in the life, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you can feel them, you can actually aware of it, and it happen inside you. 
So after you grow this body, then what happens after this expansion? So we call you transfer the consciousness, you transfer your awareness into it. So like a, a, a piece of a wood, if you burn them, it turn to be to be heat. Right. That it, it disappear. Right. Okay. Now, in physically, we cannot do anything, but when you turn it into chi, yeah. you can transform, and you can take that. Uh huh. You, you take see? the chi. You can take it. Like if you turn your heart is physically, but when you turn your heart to a pure love, uh -huh. it become another energy. Mm -hmm. But the energy, if you don't do anything, it disperses. Mm -hmm. But if you have a container, you put it in, it stay. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need to build a body first, and when you have love, joy, happy, whatever you have, mm -hmm. you want to store them you can put in the body and then of course you have to you have to have the emotional connection there. right mm -hmm. but once you have this immortal body let's say it grows mm -hmm. then then what what is what's the what do we do with this human experience the whole thing is that we call the immortal body you transfer whatever the physical thing to another body and when you want to leave the world you take whatever you transfer and left you so leave body, with your body, you yeah. transform the body right. into life. Another, another body. Right. And your consciousness also go into that body. Right. So that body is not dying, but this right. body are dying. Right. So you have to change the dying one into the one not dying, mm -hmm. and you can take it out. So oftentimes in the Tamasa, when they practice to a level, when they left the world, sometimes the body shrink down half of it because they take out a lot of things. Uh -huh. That's the same thing like Jesus practice. Well, after he died for three days, mm -hmm. his body dissolved and disappeared. Right, yeah. right. So how long does it take to build the immortal body? Like someone like who's been practicing? Actually, actually three years, uh, you, you do in the first three years, uh, you started to uh, prepare it. And when you get pregnant, we don't know when. You get pregnant with your own yeah. immortal seed. Nobody knows when. Yes. But when you keep on doing that, one day you get pregnant. Okay. Are, are you pregnant? <laughs> a man pregnant sometimes not very good, huh? Okay. Now, when you get pregnant, you need to feed them or nurture them three years. The Taoist yeah. masters were able to do this and then yeah. leave with their immortal body. Right. So this is the ultimate practice of cultivating the sexual energy. Right. Mm -hmm. I see. So 